Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make millions of coins in the Elder Scrolls Online while not doing very much at all. So what we're going to actually be doing is we're just going to be crafting the new armor sets that came out with the Necrom DLC. So there's three new armor sets if you don't know. They are Shattered Fate, Telfani Efficiency and Seeker Synthesis. So essentially all three of these new sets are going to just be introduced to the game. You know, the DLC dropped on PC two weeks ago and like two days ago on console. So these are still really fresh, not a lot of people have them and definitely not a lot of people are actually crafting them to sell to make money off which is where you're going to be able to make the most profit because you might be the only one doing this on your server. So in order to start doing this method you just want to have a pretty decent crafter, it doesn't have to be the best in the world but you want to have a crafter which is pretty good and there is a video on my channel which helps you level up all your characters crafting abilities to level 50 and do that pretty fast. So the four we really want to focus on here are blacksmithing, clothing, joy crafting and woodworking. So those are the main ones that everyone's going to need. I'll let you make all the heavy armor, all the medium light armors, all the staves and shields and any jewelry you might need. Also, because we're creating this gear to actually be used, we're going to want to make sure we have level 10 in, for example, woodworking, just to make sure we can use the CP160 materials, OK? So we also want to use resin expertise. This is pretty much just going to mean it takes half the upgrade materials that we would usually use to make the item purple. And we're going to be making our items purple just so as we can sell them for a little bit more. So in order to actually make a crossable set, okay, you're going to need to have traits unlocked by doing research. So essentially, if I come to like a clothing station, I can see there's my light armor, there's my medium armor. Now you can see I have all the traits unlocked because I've got like a master crafter. He just has everything. So essentially, if you don't have this, what you want to do is you want to be researching, for example, sturdy, impenetrable, reinforced, and that's going to get you to three traits on a particular item. You can then craft a crafted set, which needs up to three traits to be crafted, such as the Tilvani efficiency set. And obviously, the more traits you have unlocked, the better tier of crafted item you can make. So I think it is the Seeker Synthesis set needs seven traits. Shatter Fate needs five traits and Tilvani efficiency only needs three. So if you can't do all the sets, that's okay. Just do whatever one you can. I think the best seller here is probably going to be Shattered Fit. So try and get yourself to five traits and at least a couple of pieces of armor and a couple of weapons. So if you're not really too sure how to actually research something, and basically what you do is you take an item with a particular trait to a crafting station. You then hit research and then you click on it. Okay, and it pretty much is going to research it for you and destroy the item. So a passive you're going to want to have then is, for example, the carpentry or equivalent in each of the skill trees. So in woodworking, this is going to basically make it so as you can craft 25% faster. You can research up to three items and it's like a 30 day max. It can't go further than that. And something that you really, really want to have then is if you're trying to develop your trait knowledge and your character is to have these clothing research scrolls or these woodworking research scrolls. Okay. So generally you can use one of these a day unless you've got them from like daily rewards or a special event which you can just sort of spam them so you see i have eight clothing research ones for one day and there's no cooldown on them so i could you know get rid of eight days worth of research instantly so this is something good and you can actually get ones that have a 24 hour cooldown from guild traders as well for like a couple of thousand coins so if you're only starting out you're not too sure how to actually research things you want to speed the process up 100 go and buy those they're really really worth the money so now essentially whenever we have our crafter set up to level 50 we have all the necessary passive slotted and we have some research completed so we can actually make the sets all you want to do then is go and find a guild hall which has the new sets in it so this guy has them i'm just going to use his house for simplicity because that's better than running around the overland looking for them but alternatively if you don't know anyone who has a guild hall and you don't have access to someone's house with all these sets you can just go on the overland and actually go to the set locations yourself and just craft them there. There's no problem with that. So whenever we get to a crafting table, for example, we want to make sure that we're making the correct items and the correct trait weight, things like that for what people are going to want to use them for. So for example, the Shatter Fate set is going to be basically a PvP set. It's got a lot of a penetration, a lot of weapon spell damage, a lot of crit chance. So all we need to do then is make sure we're using our best wood, so sand wood, make sure it's CP160 so people buy it, does the most damage. The style doesn't really matter, um, but the trait does matter. So essentially you're going to want to think what the people want this staff to do. They're probably going to want more crit chance or they're going to want like charge maybe to apply an effect, something like that. So make sure you choose the correct trait for PvP. So whenever you actually create the item, you want to make sure you actually then upgrade it to purple at least. Now you can 
I've upgraded to gold, but that's a little bit more of an investment and it will take a little longer to sell because not everyone wants to buy a gold piece for to try a PvP build. Most people will be quite happy buying a purple piece for a little bit extra and it doesn't really cost you too much extra to make a purple. So again, it's the same with the other sets. You kind of want to like think of what they're going to be used for and then judge from that what kind of piece you want to make. So for example, with the secret synthesis set, essentially it's just a cooldown set for your potions. Now, the reason that's going to be good is basically just going to be PvP based and maybe some like really high end PvE based stuff, but you're not really going to sell to them. Okay, you kind of just want to sell to the PvP people who can't be bothered to make a crafter. So I would always make this set probably in like sturdy, reinforced, um, in pen, probably just making it like medium or light armor. Uh, because I don't really think this is a heavy armor set. To be fair, I wouldn't use it heavy personally. Um, it's probably going to be using like Dragon Knights or Necromancer, someone who just wants to like constantly drop their ultimate as quickly as they possibly can. So once you've made the pieces for the set, you don't need to sell them, of course. So you want to make sure you're in a high-end guild trader, okay? So I would always recommend being in Mournhold. For me, it's like the best city on my server. Um, obviously, if the best city is different, look for a guild there. But it makes such a difference in selling your items how quickly and for how much you can sell them for, depending on what guild you're in. So whenever it comes to the price, you want to list that. Basically, I'm just going to price them at about you know, 10, 15K roughly, depending on how much it costs me to make the item. So for example, if I'm making a light armor piece, that's gonna cost me a little bit more money than making a medium armor piece. So I'm gonna to have to like adjust the sale price for that. So on my server, a stack of Rubidite is 2.4K, okay? So I can make a heavy piece of armor or, you know, a melee weapon for like 2.4K basically. That's the entire cost of it. And then the same thing for my medium armor and same thing for any of my, you know, woodworking stuff. It's all around 2.4k stack. Then when you get into light armor, it's around 8k for a stack of the Ancestor Soak. So that means I need to add about 5-6k onto the normal price of all the other items. Just so we can be breaking even. Um, and just so we can be taking into account the price of materials. Um, some people might not buy your light armor because it's a little bit more expensive so it might be an idea to just stick to medium heavy and weapons things like that but that's completely up to you and it really depends on your server's market some people might be able to pay more for light armor and not care some people might be a bit stingy and wonder why it's more than the medium but that's just what it is so yeah that's essentially how you can make money in the new necrom dlc pretty passively pretty easily to be honest it takes you maybe five ten minutes in all honesty if you have a craft already set up to go and make a couple of these pieces and list them on your store then all you're doing is whenever a piece sells you just go and remake that piece and relist it it's pretty simple then that's passive income so you can go and be doing whatever else you want in the you know the new necrom chapter while making decent money on the side so hopefully you guys find this video to be helpful if you did remember to leave a like subscribe for more content like this and i will see you next time